Welcome back. So in the previous video, we created this function, and now I wanted to talk about the various ways we can call this function. And it's very simple. I probably could have attached it to the end of last video, but you know, whatever. So basically, we get this return value. So this is going to be returned. And whatever the value is we pass in is what we're trying to calculate the factorial of. So in the previous example, we wanted to calculate the factorial of 5. That's what we would pass in. And the result would be 120. And when you have something that returns a value, you need to do something with that value. Otherwise, it just goes away. So for example, I could do this. I want to get the factorial of 5. And I can compile this. And I can run it. Absolutely nothing happens because we're not doing anything with the value 120. So what we need to do is we need to actually assign this to something. So we could say int fact equals factorial of five. So fact should be 120. Yep, there we go, 120. So now we have the same exact program that we had in the previous video when it comes to the result, but the structure is much more consumable. And now if I wanted to basically expand this to more numbers, it's very easy. So I could do the value eight. Now we have, oh, I would need to print it, of course. <laughs> I always forget the simple things like printing. Now we have both of these numbers. So we basically just doubled our output very easily. And we could even make it simpler because anytime you have a function that returns a data type such as int, well, anywhere that the program would typically expect an integer, you can use a call to this function. And it's going to call that function first, it's gonna get a return value, and then that integer is going to be used. That's why when we do this, this is going to return a f this is going to return an integer, so you can kind of just think of it as doing this in a way. That means since certain functions ask for integers, we could just use the function call instead. So let me get rid of this line here. And what we could do is we could actually just pass in factorial of 5. And that'll work exactly the same way. And we can do the same thing with factorial of 8. And it's going to work. See? Same exact result. That's because this printf function is currently expecting a, an integer, and this returns an integer, as so does this. Now, this means that when other functions require integers, such as the factorial function, we can actually pass in a call to the factorial function. <laughs> so now this is going to ultimately return the factorial of the factorial of five. So the factorial of 120. And we can print that all within a percent D because it's an integer. Okay, that didn't work. The reason it's not working is because the number is way too large. <laughs> I wasn't really thinking factorial of 120 is going to be enormous. So let's try something a little smaller. <laughs> Maybe this will work. And there we go, because three times two is six, and the factorial of six is 720. So there you guys, there you go, there you go, guys. That is just some practice with uh, functions. And before we go, I just actually wanted to talk about one other thing. You can see that we're printing values here. I just wanted to emphasize that if you wanted to debug this, you could do print statements inside of the function. So you could say, oh, where well, you could keep track of what the value is as you're multiplying. But in general, you do not want to print inside of functions because it limits the use, because then you can only use the function when you want to print. And that just goes for things in general. Always keep the function as simple as possible to do one, one exactly thing, exactly one thing. So this function, you know it's calculating the factorial. You're not expecting it to print or do any logging. It's not gonna do any of that stuff behind the scenes unless you, you want it to. 